Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. A while back I did a video. Um, I, I ran across a technical manual entry on measuring impedance using an oscilloscope and a signal generator, which interested me enough that I did a video on it. Um, you might remember the video we used. Let me uh, pull this up here. There we go. So we used a really simple circuit where you've got a signal source and a reference resistor that you know the value of and the device that you're testing and uh, you put in a set frequency you measure the voltage on each side of the reference resistor so you know its voltage drop you do a little bit of math and you come up with the voltage drop or the resistance um, in this case impedance of the device under test pretty simple and I built a little jig to test that um, here I was testing it, and you can see this jig I built here in the background. And we did some uh, we did some tests with the oscilloscope over here, and we measured values, calculated impedances. Got a little odd result uh, with an inductor with the impedance going up instead of uh, down. Wait, no, well it didn't behave the way it should. Yeah, it should have gone down with the frequency going down, but it went up. Uh, so that was a little odd, strange inductor. Um, uh, there were a couple of comments. Uh, one was this reference resistor here, which I don't know if I can zoom. No, I can't zoom in the video viewer. Uh, I used a precision resistor, which uh, could be a wire wound resistor, which would have an inductive component. So that should probably be a carbon resistor so it doesn't have any inductance that would change its uh, voltage drop with frequency. But I had another comment that was very intriguing. Um, Robert here commented uh, that he wanted to correct me on the way I used my math. And uh, now I'm not challenging Robert directly here. I'm really intrigued, honestly intrigued with the point that he makes. Uh, when the unknown impedance ZX is non resistive, then the voltages are out of phase across the reference resistor VA1, VA2, out of phase. And you can't simply subtract their amplitudes without taking phase angle into account. Um, okay, yeah, if the two uh, were out of phase, you know, I don't know how that would affect the voltage measurement. Um, if you take a sine wave and you shift its phase, its voltage is going to stay the same. Uh, but, okay, um, it's, it's a compelling argument. And he goes on to, to uh, uh, if you had an oscilloscope with two inputs and a math function, it would give you the correct answer. Or you can play around with LT spice. Now I responded to him um, here. The uh, the setup and math were out of a technical manual, so I trusted the source. Um, as to the VA1 and VA2 being out of phase, um, wouldn't that require some kind of delay across the reference resistor? Because um, I can't imagine how those the signal on one side of the resistor and the signal on the other side of the resistor could be out of phase. Uh, I just I just couldn't imagine how that could be. But Robert went on to explain it mathematically. Uh, the current through the resistor and unknown impedance is equal. Yes. Let's say that ZX is a capacitor. Then the whole circuit becomes a low-pass filter. Okay. With VA1 being the input voltage and VA2 being the output voltage. Um, yeah, I guess I could kind of see that because you've got a resistor coming in, you've got a capacitor to ground, so you've got an RC time constant, and that would that would make this point kind of the output. But all right, this low pass filter has a phase shift between the input and output because that's normal behavior for a low pass filter. True. Let's pick an input voltage, and so he gives a an example where he does the math and calculates that there would be a phase shift of a full 90 degrees um, between those two signals, which is pretty extreme. Um, yeah, okay, uh, not sure. But, you know, it's a compelling argument. And so I thought, well, let's just test it. We'll go down to the bench, we'll hook up the, uh, the jig again, and we'll uh, put the scope on the input and the output of that resistor, 
and we'll look at the signals and we'll see if they shift phase or not. So let's go down to the bench. Well, we're down here at the bench to uh, test Robert's assertion that the uh, phase angle at the two measurement points will be out of phase, which invalidates um, doing the straight up voltage measurements and math. And uh, so to test that, I've got the same jig. Um, I have replaced the reference resistor with a carbon resistor. I had a precision resistor in there and there was another comment and makes sense that the precision resistor might be wire wound, which would make it uh, have an inductive comp uh, component to it. Um, so I've just got a carbon resistor in here now, straight up regular old eighth watt or quarter watt carbon resistor. Um, using the uh, little uh, QCX as a signal source. The uh, yellow trace is input number one, which is on the upside of the resistor. And the blue trace is input number two, which is on the low side of the resistor, V1 and V2, VA1, VA2. And for a device under test, I have a variable capacitor. So it's a non-resistive load, um, as Robert mentioned. Uh, and it allows me to vary the capacitance too, which will change the impedance in real time. So we can look at the phase relationship uh, between the two signals as we change the frequency and the capacitance, and we can see if it does indeed change. Right now, I'm putting in uh, 3 megahertz on the input side. And uh, as you can see, the phase, uh, they're in phase. Uh, the input and the output, high, VA1 and VA2 are in phase. The peaks are lining up. Now I'm going to increase the frequency, and uh, there we are at 8 megahertz. And if I move that position up, there may be just a teeny tiny bit of phase shift. It's hard to tell. Maybe just a teeny bit. Certainly not a 90 degree shift. Um, it, it's awfully, awfully small if there is. If there is a shift, it's awfully, awfully small. Let's change our uh, capacitance. And we should see the voltage change on the blue trace, which we are. But I don't see the phase shifting any. Right, there's the lowest value. There's the highest value. Now I see the, uh, the voltage going up and down, but I don't see a phase shift happening. All right, let's go even higher in frequency. Let's go up to 10 megahertz. And again, it's really hard to tell. I mean, they're awfully close. If there's a phase shift, it's awfully small. Let's go back down. There's four megahertz. Yeah. Robert might be right that there's a phase shift, but it's, it's really, really, really small. Um, I don't see how that's going to affect um, the measurement significantly. So, I don't know. <laughs> go even higher in frequency. Let's go on up to, uh, let's say, 20 megahertz. 20. Mm -hmm. 20 megahertz. I'll have to, the voltage drops so much because of the reactive load that I'll have to uh, up the sensitivity there a bit. Let's shift this up. And, you know, if it's, if it's shifted any, it's, it hasn't shifted any more than it did before. It's, it's hardly hardly enough to even be sure that there is a phase shift going on. Yeah, it's, it's about the same as it was before. I, I don't know. I mean, that's a massive change up to 20 megahertz. And I mean, you can see the peaks are right there at the same spot. I mean, there might be just the teeniest bit of delay, because this, I think, is just lagging behind, just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but that's just not that much of a phase shift. Yeah, 
in one of Robert's examples, he said the phase shift could be 90 degrees. Um, I figured we'd see a much, much bigger difference. Yeah, see, it's still lagging just a tiny bit, and we're all the way down to 3 megahertz again. So, uh, Robert might be right that there might be a, a phase shift across this resistor from VA1 to VA2. Uh, but it's awfully, awfully, awfully small if it's, uh, if it's even really there. Um, so there we go. Right. So we didn't see much of a phase shift, if any. Um, and I, I can see what Robert was saying. If we look back at the schematic, he's saying that if this is a capacitor over here, uh, Z out or ZX, then this resistor going to this capacitor makes this point here the output of a low pass filter and I can kind of see that but there's really no phase shift going on across this resistor or if there is it's very 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 tiny um, so so I don't know you know um, it's a compelling argument uh, I would say it's you know still up in the air um, um, like I say, I'm not trying to, to point fingers and say, you're wrong. I don't know. So I'm just measuring it. I'm testing it. I'm building up uh, the test rig, and I'm, I'm measuring it to see what we see. And I'm presenting you with the results. So um, draw your own conclusions, you know, and uh, if you want to duplicate the experiment, or if you do duplicate the experiment, maybe with higher quality gear than what I have, I'd certainly like to hear about your results in the comments down below. Um, I'm always looking for information and truth. That's my goal. You know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I just have to change my uh, point of view. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's not about being right or wrong for me. It's just about uh, what's going on. What's the data? What's uh, you know? What's the experiment show? So, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.